Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to B and K Bees. Uh, it is May 14th, and a very pertinent issue at this time of year is uh, swarm prevention, and I that's what I'm dealing with today out here, um, trying to prevent swarming, but still uh, encourage buildup. And so I figured I'd talk about that while I'm going through this hive. Losing swarms isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world, especially if you can catch them off of your tree or whatever. But it is a useful, you know, uh, knowledge base to have to know how to prevent that and to know when it's happening and know what signs to look for to tell you that it's getting ready to happen. Um, and queen cell <laughs> is not necessarily the only answer to that. There are other issues when they create queen cells. So the things you should be looking for are cramped boxes, lots of drone cells along with the queen cells. That's telling you that they have a surplus of energy um, and that they're starting that, that process. That's what bees do. So they're creating drones to add to the local pool because they know other bees are getting ready to swarm and, and there's going to be a lot of virgins flying around looking for mating partners. So, drone cells, cramped conditions. Um, you know, if, if those aren't the case, if it's not very cramped and you see a queen cell, you can pretty much guess it might be a supersedure cell or, you know, maybe the, the queen was damaged or killed in some way. Um, but what can you do if you think they are getting ready to swarm? If you think that's true, but you don't see actual preparation like building of swarm cells, give their brood nest more room. Be careful when giving them blank foundation because they don't often consider that more room. You might want to pair that with food so that they can draw that out quickly and then they will think of it as more room. Otherwise, it's just a, a piece of, in this case, plastic in the middle of their brood nest. So give them more room right in the middle of the brood nest. Um, obviously, in a lot of cases, you'll be adding a box as well. In that case, bring some of those brood nest frames up and replace them with those frames from the new box. Um, that will give them more room in all senses of the term. So these ones are not necessarily getting ready to swarm, but that would not be very far off. They are covering every frame except for those two, but I will checker those into the center before I'm done here. Brood on all of these frames. Once the cap stuff starts hatching, that swarm process would not be, would not take long. So, kind of plan ahead, you know. In this particular case, like I said, it would have been an issue in a short period of time had I not been in here giving this brood area room to breathe. I'm mostly giving them blank stuff though. Um, I'm not necessarily gonna put food on them right this second because there's a lot of stuff blooming. Um, but I think I caught it early enough to where that is not gonna be an issue. So if you see swarm cells, and they've already started the process, your first mode of action should be to find that queen. If you can't find her, you can pretty much guess that they've already swarmed. And swarm prevention is no longer an issue. Um, if you do find her, the best mode of action is, is to do a swarm simulation split where you take the queen, the old queen, some frames of brood and a lot of bees to a new location. It does not have to be miles away. It can be right next to the hive. Um, and leave them, leave the original location with those queen cells. That's the, exactly the situation they would be in if they had swarmed. And that will do a great deal of reduction in that swarm tendency. Now that might not eliminate that swarm tendency depending on how large that hive is. So if it's still cramped as heck, if it's still huge, and there were tons of cells, you might want to consider making a couple of other splits with some of those cells. 
but make that decision on a case-by-case -case basis. But utilize that information, you know. Try not to lose any swarms. You'll put up more honey that way. You'll be able to manage your bees better that way. Um, you'll be able to increase your hive numbers quicker that way. But it's a whole lot of fun catching swarms too, so it's not the end of the world. If they swarm to a nearby tree, it's a painful sight though, if you see them flying well out of sight. Oh, my back. So, and also remember, um, I can find that darn sharpie. Also remember the things I've been talking about recently uh, in terms of swarm cells. Ah, never mind, I'll talk about that anyway. All right, so, um, you know, as I always say, thank you for watching. If you like this video, click like. If you haven't already, click subscribe. Tune in next week for another episode of Random Inspection Friday. Get out there and have some fun with your bees, yada, yada, yada. See you later.